Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt with 8.6. Today I'm going to try and take a quick look at the Axa P400. Sometimes with projectors there can be a pretty decent amount of things to cover, so I'll be as quick as possible. In the box you receive the projector, the power charging DC input cable, the remote, it's kind of a weird remote, it looks like one of those RGB controller remotes. I've got a ton of them laying around. The P400 is a small, lightweight, travel easy, really nice kind of companion projector. It can be used on battery mode for approximately two hours. Now that's really going to depend on what you have plugged into it. If you're using something like a fire stick or if you're using a Roku that requires power from the projector that's obviously going to eat a little bit into the battery life. Also when it's on battery life you are limited to a lower brightness you cannot use the max brightness on battery because that would just tear through the battery even faster. On the rear of the projector is a TF card reader or micro SD card reader for your saved portable storage your movies documents music pictures things like that. The video format that you're gonna want to go with is going to be AVI format for it to work off of that and depending on whatever you have on that card or really no matter what you have on that card the very basic AXA menu that is on startup because it's not a smart projector has a pretty easy layout that's pretty intuitive in order to get to and access the things you want to access. On the very top of the projector is a touch menu where you can do volume up and down and use menu selections, you know, up, down, left, right, okay a back button at the bottom right, and the menu button itself on there. On the left side of the Exa P400 is the on-off power toggle switch, the DC input for power and charging, so you can either plug in and charge it, it'll be green when it's fully charged, or keep it powered dedicated by just having the power remain inside of it. This will also let you use the max brightness level. There's a small tiny pinhole for a manual reset switch for factory resetting the entire device if you ever need to do that. A single HDMI input, manual focus wheel, and a 3.5 millimeter audio output jack if you wanted to go with something a little bit better than what it has to offer. And I'm gonna recommend that and I'll cover that in just a minute also because of the speaker's location. On the right side is a single USB 2.0 for type A storage or for power delivery to something like I mentioned earlier, a Roku or a Fire Stick. Other than that, there's two fans mounted here for intake. Here, take a listen. The front of the projector features the lens and a two watt speaker. So as this is a short throw projector, it should sit closer to the flat image that you're gonna be projecting on, which means you're most likely gonna be behind this projector. And this is kind of what I mean about the speaker placement. The speaker is front firing and you'll probably be behind the projector. But in most cases anyways, an external audio source is going to be what I would recommend. Onboard speakers in some of these projectors are a little bit on the lacking side. We'll demo that here real quick just so that you can compare its onboard sound with another speaker. And I know it's recorded audio that you're playing back over your own speakers but do your best to try to detect differences it's not going to give you the most accurate sounding sound i suppose bottom of the P400 is a single bottom thread mount making it really easy to orient this if you're into art. If you're somebody that wants to use the projector for art, aim it down and actually just make some tracings drawings that way. And the projector does feature an invert and a flip mode so if you wanted to hang it upside down from the ceiling and project it with a flipped image that is a totally doable thing. A little bit about the tech. AXA uses LED in-house brightness measurements to measure brightness. I'll never be a fan of this for any projector company that doesn't have something a little more standardized such as ANSI. Your LED lumen brightness measurement could really be whatever you feel like it should be as the manufacturer production person the company and uh, I just really don't like gauging off of those because 400 LED lumens to one company is not 400 LED lumens to another company but ANSI kind of gives you a standardized feel I would much prefer to see something like that check out some of the shots I'm showing right now and see what you think between the lights on and the lights off the chip actually used in this is an Elcos chip which is a liquid crystal on silicon chip so unlike the erroneous claim made here by this weird reviewer there is no spinning color wheel there is no fear of a rainbow effect to be had here and this would be due in large to the fact that there's no DLP DMD chip on board in this projector it is an Elkos liquid crystal on silicon and it's totally different technology from DLP the projector does boast a 1080p experience at native and it looks very nice and while at first I didn't notice this when I started to kind of scrutinize it and look at it there is definitely a screen door pattern that somewhat goes in different forms of diagonals and looks like dots it's not terrible until you get up close and really start looking for it and that's where you're 
you're gonna notice it. So there is a screen door effect here. It's not particularly bad while watching, but when you get up close and start looking, like I mentioned, it's gonna be noticeable. You may be wondering, because it's Elkos, how does it do on a black crush test? Well, I'm gonna show you that right here too and what I can see as well as I can. You know, a camera's not gonna capture it exactly and then you're gonna be watching it on a monitor. So I will point at the one that I can see still represents a square on the screen. It was a little bit of a fail at 13. The darks are extremely dark and the darks all look dark together in a very dark manner. This projector might not be a home theater replacement, but it is a solid, portable art and entertainment projector for camping, events, late evening barbecues. But assuming that it won't be an obstructive thing to hang down about five feet away from the wall, you can get a good 90 to 100 inches in that range of five to six feet. And that's something that's worth mentioning because it's, it's a nice little short throw projector all in all. Now the projection that I'm going for here is actually a 95 inch on the diagonal projection on this wall and it's about 67 inches away from the wall. I think this would do best in a smaller room, and if you're gonna go with a mounted kind of solution, a smaller room is definitely probably the direction I'd go with this. It doesn't take up a lot of space, it's bright enough, and it looks pretty good. Anyways guys, that's me trying to cover some of the basics with this as quickly as possible. I hope you guys took something away from it and it was somewhat helpful to you. You guys have a great day and night, whatever it is, and I'll see you in the next video that I do.